volumes have also been increasing this week and that's a very positive sign for the Australian share market as we rise seeing volumes accelerate uh, is almost like the acceleration pedal on a car where we are seeing a bit of power in this move it is going to be a busy day at 11 a.m. we will see the Woolworths first quarter sales numbers drops we see production numbers out from Woodside Petroleum and Santos today the NAB business survey is due and at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time we get uh, the raft of China numbers the GDP industrial production retail sales fixed asset investment but altogether things are looking very good for the Australian share market we've seen volumes are rising we've seen interest rates falling here in Australia we've seen iron ore prices are rising as well and in the US signs of the housing market have turned a corner really helping a global sentiment as in Europe we are seeing our 10-year yields for Spanish bonds and Italian bonds actually falling to the lowest levels in months so a pretty positive backdrop um, the market looking like it is due for a rally and it is looking like a quick, pretty healthy one with volumes rising on the back of this move up. Julia, this, this view of the market and obviously the technical guys are saying this market can head a couple of hundred points higher in coming weeks and months and we heard that on Sky News Business on, uh, at the close yesterday after we made that 45.13. Um, it seems like when people are looking at the earnings outlook though, you know, they're not able to justify this market going a whole lot higher. There's quite a, a big divergence of views depending on kind of how, you know, the perspective you're viewing this market from. And that's a key. I guess in FY12 we did see earnings down by 2% and that was a key reason why we did see those defensive areas outperforming the market. If we have a look at areas like the utility sector, the telecom sector, the healthcare sector, these are all areas that are up around about 25% or more over the last year. So this rally has really been driven by the defensive side of the market as well as the banks. What we now want to see are the growth areas stepping up to the plate and we're really watching that material space which is such a big part of our market. The positive there is that we have seen iron ore prices coming back from that $87 level that we saw back in August and now we are seeing prices around the $115 level. Of course this is all dependent on demand from China and that's why those uh, numbers coming out at 1 p.m. are going to be important not only for our miners but also the Aussie dollar which is seen as a barometer of global sentiment and I guess a derivative of the strength of the Chinese economy. So we're going to be watching that very closely so the next part of the rally really does need other materials space to take some part of it uh, in the, the rally and the signs that we are seeing stabilization in the iron ore price a huge positive for that area mm -hmm. and leading to some pretty bullish sentiment for the Aussie share market in coming months. Julia uh, I want to ask you about channel 10 or 10 network shares uh, they seem like they've put out a result worse than expected it's funny to um, reflect on some of the comments of uh, the nine CEO David Gingell saying uh, nines like the greatest sporting uh, comeback uh, Stephen Bradbury uh, it's been compared to I think 10 needs to do a bit of a Stephen Bradbury themselves um, any hope uh, within what they've saying, said today of, of some kind of turnaround I think the reason why the uh, I Corp sale was so important to 10 was not only would it uh, pay off our debt and get the debt le levels down but also would give it room to be able to invest in content and that's really what chi uh, what 10 needs to do it needs to revitalize its channel and it needs to attract more ad revenue we have a look at the uh, SMI numbers for September we actually saw total ad spend increasing by 6% in the month of September it is coming off a low base but signs of a, a little bit of life and we saw a good result for 9 which saw a rise of about 6% we saw a good rise for 7 which saw ad spend up by about 13 percent but 10 has actually been going the other way if we have a look at the month of September we've seen ads spend on 10 down by 26 percent and that follows a pretty big drop in August where we saw a drop of 42 percent so you can see that 10 is in trouble in terms of advertising revenue coming through the door and we, we've seen that reflected in the full year numbers but also the start of the current financial year for 10 looks like it's been a pretty soft one one of the keys to turning this around is its investment in content and that's what we were hoping to see today its strategy around 2013 programming to try and attract more ad revenue through the door unfortunately the last year looks like it has been a very difficult one for 10 expectations were for a profit of 14 million dollars we've actually seen continuing uh, 
a profit from continuing operations coming just above that six million dollar mark so really missing the mark there but I think what the market's going to be focusing in on is its 2013 strategy in regards to programming but unfortunately the delay of this I Corp sale may uh, leave 10 with its hands tied behind its back in terms of more spend and investment in this area so we'll be watching 10 closely and that's one of the reasons why expectations of a capital raising are increasing so it does have the money to be able to invest in programming we did see a capital raising from 10 back in June where we saw 200 million dollars raised and that was a highly dilutive capital raising a 348 at 51 cents of course we've seen 10 shares reaching an all-time record low on expectations that uh, capital raising will be uh, will need to be done so we'll be watching 10 shares hopefully bouncing off those 30 cent lows but on the back of these results it looks like the market's going to be pretty disappointed yeah no um, read on them just yet Julia so we'll wait for that um, Woodside Petroleum meantime some production numbers been a big week of production numbers what's the key to this um, this set of numbers today for people we're hoping to see a pretty good set of quarterly production numbers for Woodside Petroleum and I guess if we have a look at Woodside Petroleum really one of the things that have that has changed for this business over the last couple of months is that we have seen Pluto in production and with positive cash flow. So Pluto is really contributing to Woodside Petroleum's production now as well as cash flows and that should be reflected in those quarterly numbers. Now the 2012 target for Woodside Petroleum in terms of production is 77 to 83 million barrels of oil equivalent and of course that was raised in August. Uh, previously it had been 73 to 83 million barrels of oil equivalent and one of the key reasons behind that is that Pluto has been ahead of schedule and it has been contributing quite strongly. So we're going to be watching Pluto. Most analysts, most broking houses expect that we will see a Pluto expansion. It's just a question of when. So that's one of the things that the market is going to be keeping a close ear to the ground for whether we do see an expansion of that Pluto project. We have a look at Woodside Petroleum as a company, world-class assets, really focusing in on that Northwest Shell as well as the Pluto assets, which are the key for Woodside Petroleum at the moment. But it's got customers all over Asia, blue chip customers in the utility space in South Korea, in Japan and, and in China. And um, I guess one of the negatives though is that we always keep an eye on that Royal Dutch Shell holding of about 23%, which is still hanging over the stock but world-class assets, Pluto outperforming, and that should help these quarterly numbers which should you out.